off to two different colleges uh, after that and did not do very well. I was having too much fun, um, not going to classes, partying too much, that type of story. You hear it a lot. But mine is uh, one of those things that I try to tell everybody every day is to not take things for granted. I live by that motto. It's on my business cards. It's I got to sign it to school we go by. So I, I was doing that every day. It didn't matter what I was doing. I was just taking, thing, taking everything for granted, but being innocent at the same time, thinking nothing's going to happen for me or nothing's going to happen to me, excuse me. And then in September of 98, I had a cousin that, lived up to me, excuse in me. Alex Bay, Clayton area that was in a car accident. And his grandmother is actually my, was my godmother. And so we were very close as a family. And at the time I was living in Providence, Rhode Island. And when, when he had the accident, he was in an induced coma for a few weeks when they finally decided that they can't do that to him anymore, and he wasn't going to have any kind of quality of life. So um, they ended up pulling the plug. And when that happened, his light bulb hit me. He's like, I got smacked right in the face by a boxer, Christy. I, I felt it. <laughs> so the light bulb turned on. It's like, what am I doing here? Why am I just going paycheck to paycheck? and not doing anything with my life. So I decided I would come home, get my life straightened out. And when I did, I was home for a week. I had a job interview. I had a job all lined up. And the Friday morning of October 2nd, 1998, I was helping some friends of ours move their daughter down to Virginia. And they kept asking me that whole morning, while we're loading up the rider truck or U-Haul or whatever it was at the time, if I would go with them and help them. And I told them, no, I've only been home a week. I still want to spend time with my family and things like that. So they took me to breakfast that morning before they had to the Virginia and we were in Tully. And then they filled up my gas tank for me and they left, got on 81 to head south and I had it on Route 80 East to come back home, and that's pretty much the last thing I remember. Um, I was driving down the road. I've driven down a million times. I was the only uh, person in the vehicle, only vehicle in the accident, and I don't know what happened. I was a smoker at the time, so I could have dropped a cigarette. I was going around the curve. Um so many different things that I don't know that could have happened at the time. Yeah. So, yep. And J- Josh, when you say that you don't, yeah, you know, when when you say that that last thing that you remember is kind of, you know, just being in the car and going around the curve. I know you said that things have kind of come back in pieces. Has there anything else? Has anything else come back, or or any kind of maybe like? fragments of something come back so the person that found me was my high school basketball coach and at the time you taught not to move somebody because it could cause more damage than what's already done and i had a hoodie on at the time so he had no idea it was me but he was after talking with him some things have come back and he was keeping me calm and i can remember hearing the ambulance in the background and so when they got there and they were asking me my name and things like that because i was conscious they uh when they said my name my my coach was just dumbfounded and floored that it was me and i can remember them asking me the questions to make sure i didn't have a head injury so my name, where I'm from, where I'm going, the date, that type of thing. And then they asked me who the president was. And I said it was Hillary Clinton. And they all looked at me funny and said, no. I said, well, okay. Bill's the <laughs> actual president that Hillary's running the country. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So right then and there, they knew I did not have a head injury. <laughs> uh, they knew because my family is, my father's a fire fireman here in Fabius and has been for all these years. So all the Tully fire, firemen knew of me and knew my humor, so they knew that I was all right. So there are two other things that I distinctly remember from that day, even without help. And that was, this was before cell phones, um, that my parents were already at the hospital when the ambulance got there. So wow. as soon as those ambulance doors opened, there my parents were there waiting for me. Yeah. And the other uh, distinct thing that I remember is that night, when my parents and my sister told me I could never walk again. Um, that, that was, that was obviously a very disappointing thing for anybody. But when they walked in the room, I could tell that obviously something was really bad, but the way my sister and my father walked in, it was like, I was dying. But then when I saw my mom, who's like the rock of our family, I could tell it wasn't as bad as it had seemed. And when they told me, I looked around the room at the three of them, and all I said is, what's next? What do we got to do? Where do we go from here? And that's what my mentality has been from day one is, okay, something's happened, but how do I adjust? I was always taught by the baseball coach that I coach with now, who I played for, is it's not what happened to you, it's how you respond. Or don't make excuses, you make adjustments. Those two things that he taught me as a player, I live by every day. Yeah. So, so those were the two things that I remember distinctly from that day. Yeah, you know, and I think a lot of people's response to you'll never walk again is is not okay well what's next what do we do next you know that that obviously passion for life and that desire to move forward and to be here you know there's some people that fight to live on and there's some people that kind of feel like okay i'm just i'm just gonna lay here i'm just gonna quit christy has spoken about this many times of you know she said you're not you're not going to kill me in in her situation and saying that, you know, there's no way that she was going to die on that floor. There was no way that she was going to give up. Josh, for you, I have a question. Did... Have a question yeah, go ahead. Josh, yeah. why, what, in, in your growing up, why do you think, what was it that, that led you to have that kind of fight and that kind of determination that, oh, well, I mean, this is shit happens and I'm going to keep going on and, and this isn't going to be a setback to me. It's going to be, you know, a step up, not a step back, a step back. Uh, that's a great question, Chris, Christy. Out of all the years that I've been telling my story, no one has ever asked that question to me. So to be honest with you, it, it's the way my family has always been. It's the way we have always done things that, like I said, my mom's like the rock of our family. She's always been that positive role model, that positive person that when something happens, we adjust, we move on, we make light of it. And as an athlete that I was, yeah, I was very hard-nosed. I was very hard on myself. But at the same time, it was a game. So at the same time, I'm still living. I'm still alive. I'm still breathing. And what I was like, I had mentioned briefly a little bit before what I was like before my accident after high school, I was living. Yes, but not for anything. So now I actually had something to fight for. Before, I was taking so much for granted that I didn't have, in my mind, I wasn't living for anything. I was just living to have fun, living to 
throw all the money I had away. Now, here I have something to fight for. Took it as an athlete. <coughs> Use that as motivation. I have to do this every day. Go to physical therapy. I treated physical therapy like I did practice. Every day to get better, to get stronger, to be able to live a quality life. And that's what we've always done as a family. In my situation, I feel like God left me here to help other people. And and whether you, I, I think you, you know you're doing that, and I'm pretty sure that's one of the things that you have at the top of your list, helping other people. But the role model and the example that you sit every day that you're putting out there for for so many is huge and and i just want to say you're, you're a badass <laughs> thank, you. Yes, he is. <laughs> thank you very much so you know you always had everybody has when something bad happens to them it's why me why did god right. do this to me and so for years i had that going through my brain. It wasn't a pity party. It's just like, why? Like, what What led this other than to change my life, to get my life on track? And even though I had my accident in October and I started coaching baseball in March, that quick turnaround, it wasn't still for a couple of years. It was like, all right, now I know why he did this. Now I know why he change my life so that I can teach others to not take things for granted and to help them. And I was telling Dan last night that I've coached hundreds of kids and I've said all along with any from day one is if I could just help one of them, that makes everything else cream of the crop. And I've had so many kids use me as their example when they're writing their college essays their admit admission essays using me as their inspiration or my their, my story to help them get into college and and that and then i had another kid a few years back make all cny in soccer and is what's your inspiration it says coach virgil and why he has to go through day by day this makes my life easy. And so it's little things like that, like you said. Um, just getting these kids motivated. Yeah. That, that drives me every single day to get out of this bed. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you for, for us and thank you for them. Yeah. And, and Josh, and, you know, to tell that story and to share that, and I appreciate that. We all appreciate that so very much that you know there is no quit in you that you said what's the next step what's the next thing we're going to do and uh, like like I was saying with Christy it was the same thing it was what am I going to do to protect myself what am I going to do to save myself what am I going to do to move forward both of you have something inside of you that refuses and I can't stand this word it makes me want to throw up so I can't say it I don't even like spelling it but Neither one of you had that Q-U-I-T in you. So, Christy, to kind of share a little bit more back to Josh on this, what was it in you when when Josh talks about his upbringing and his family and just how everybody was, what can you say about the no-quit mentality in you and, and what got you up off the of floor and what got you continuing to move when you could have in a different situation – laid down and said, all right, I'm done. Right. Well, like Josh, you know, family, my mom and dad told me that from the beginning, you can do anything you want to do. So I had that strong mentality, um, that winner mentality and laying there on the floor. It was just, I wasn't going to let him win. I wasn't going to let him win bottom line. And that's what got me up. And, uh, of course that, and, and, um, God carried me right out of the house. So it took me, so we did the middle of the road to flag down my angel, Rick, 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 uh, Cole. So really, I just blessed, you know, to have that growing up where you want to be a winner. My dad was a, an athlete. Um, 
just that winner mentality. Just, just like, you know, with, with, with Josh, you, what's next? Like totally different situations, but yeah. got to get up and keep moving on. Yeah. Different situations, but the same fight. Pat, I, I know that, you know, you've known Josh for a while here and I know that he means a lot to you. What would you like to share this morning or ask Josh here on Wake Up Call inside of Christie's Corner? I got to tell you, the best statement I've heard so far is Christy saying he's a badass, and I think he ought to put that around the back of his wheelchair because, Josh, you are a badass. You, when you wheel into an event or any place, the smile on people's faces is amazing, and the smile that goes back from you is is even better. Um, you're an inspiration to me. I mean, I met you... God, I don't even know how many years ago I started at the NSS program with your mom. And um, first time I met you, I think it was at the bowling alley maybe. But it was just like, yep, that's Josh. He's everything that Sue says and talks about. And I can see why you light up her life and, and warns and, and terrors too. Um, not being a quitter is 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 pretty damn important. Um I don't think successful people are quitters because they wouldn't be able to get past that, that first curveball that they get. Um, and I, th- I think that just doing family events with you and seeing the friends and family around you, um, you were left on this earth to inspire people. And, and you do it 500% every day. Those kids that you work with just adore you. They listen to you. They may not always start listening to you, but by the end of their, their season, they're listening to you and they're and they're understanding. Um, your your athletic, uh, I think your athletic career helped you be where you are today too. Even though you may have been partying a little too much, not taking life seriously, and going down the wrong road, but you know it happened for a reason. And um, if you're you're making God proud by what you're doing, I can tell you that. Well, thank you. Means a lot. Yeah, Josh, like you said, you know, all the coaching that you've done and all the kids that you've gotten to help, you and I were talking about this last night, helping one person, getting out to one person, reaching one individual. It's not about the millions. It's not about the thousands. It's it's about can we can we affect one person and help them move forward in a positive way? For you, how rewarding has it been to take something that happened to you and never let that thing define you, but essentially to utilize that adversity and turn it into something positive to help out someone else? Well, what, like, yes, I do it to motivate kids and things like that, but I'm just me. I'm just being who I am, how I was raised. And it's not just my sports that I do this for. For example, I'm the vice president of the Syracuse Spinal Association. So I'm out there with others that are in the same, I don't want to say shoes, because let's say tires. (laughs) That they are also paralyzed, but may not have the motivation I have for things like that. So our association pretty much does, we we have life quality grants, or, I'm sorry, quality of life grants that can help get them a ramp on their house if need be, or different medical things that insurance can't cover. And we meet once a month just, to talk if someone's having issues or things like that. So it goes along with them as well. It's not just my athletes. Is if I could just help one of them. It's, I don't know, it's who I am. It's, it's not, I, I don't do it for accolades. I don't do it for this. I don't do it for that. I just, I do it because I want to help people. Like Christy was saying, I, I do it because that's who our family has always been. We've always volunteered. We've always done what we can to help others. Absolutely. 
Pat knows Pat's seen everything we've always done as a family as well. So, yeah. You know, and, and bringing that positivity here this morning inside of Christie's Corner, proudly presented by PB&J's Lunchbox, 6630 Liverpool Road in Liverpool, New York, open for you all throughout the week. And, of course, you can see their food truck as well heading to a community near you in central and upstate New York. We're here with Christy Salters Martin, International Boxing Hall of Famer, as well as public speaker and a jack of many trades, has a book out as well that you can go and get yourself on Amazon. And, of course, uh, Miss Pat Ora, boxing photographer and a food connoisseur. And uh, Josh Virgil, who comes to us today as a coach of 24 years in our community at Fabius Pompey. He's been a part of so many different sports and is currently the assistant coach of the boys' varsity soccer program. Josh, when you and I were speaking yesterday, and I want to share this with everybody, there was a rule that was put in place that you that someone that was in a situation such as yours could not be a head coach. And there is some good news that has come from your fight to try and go from assistant to head coach. And I would love for you to share that story on how you were able to create an opportunity, not just for yourself, but for other people in order to become head coaches. Yeah, so about 10, 12 years ago, I uh, school asked me if I could be their JV basketball coach and I was thrilled and honored and so I started going through the coaching classes and then they realized because I couldn't perform CPR or first aid that I wasn't allowed to be a head coach at the time I really I, I was as excited as I was to be asked to and wanted to I didn't really feel I was at that moment in my life where I could be. So things, I let things go by the wayside and I kept being the assistant for all three sports here at the school. And then a few, two years ago, I decided, all right, I'm ready. I want to take on my own team. I'd love to have my own program at some point. So I went through the school to try to help get that legislation passed, changed in some way, some form. And we kind of had a few roadblocks here and there. And then I decided, all right, I got to go politically on this. So I went to a, my local assemblyman, Al Sturpey, and we also got Rachel May on board, the local senator. And they both took him back to their houses and wrote this new bill that would include is I could be a head coach or anybody that cannot perform CPR or first aid. As long as they either had an assistant or somebody on the premises that could perform those duties could be a head coach. So once that law was written, both the assembly and the Senate passed it unanimously. And then I had to wait another couple weeks to a month or two for it to actually get on the governor's desk and have her sign it. So that happened last summer. Um, and then this past spring, I was able to actually be a head coach for the very first time. I don't know if it's the first time in New York State. I'm assuming so, but you know what happens when you ex assume. So, <laughs> um, but I got to be the head coach of the JV softball team here at Fabius for the first time. And I had an assistant, which was my father, <laughs> EMT, and with the fire department. So he had all the CPR and first aid and everything like that. And that kind of went back full circle from when I was a kid and he was my coach. And we would play catch at four years old out in the yard till dark up until I couldn't until I got out of high school and now here we were coaching together so it, it was it was awesome it was so much fun had fun with the girls it was different I've never done softball before 
but I took the baseball mentality with the hitting and the fielding over to the softball side, and we had a very successful season. Yeah, I mean, and for you, Josh, I mean, that has to be so rewarding that not only – uh, because because of your situation and not being able to perform CPR, that that was the only thing standing in front of you. And like you said in the beginning, you didn't think you were in a place to become a head coach. But then when you were ready to do that, you realized you had to go higher and higher to get this done. Did you feel like in, in that same respect when we talk about that no QUIT mentality, that you were fighting not just for yourself but for other people that would like to be head coaches. Did you get a sense for that of like, I'm not just doing this for me, I'm doing this. So there will be legislation to help out other people that have the drive to become a head coach as well. Oh, of course. Absolutely. It was. Yeah. I mean, I did it obviously because I wanted to be a head coach, but it wasn't just about me, just like anything else, else I do in life. It's not, I try not to make things about me. It's, like, I, another thing I always say, it's not my world, it's your world. I'm just rolling in it. Um, <laughs> so, awesome. <laughs> I, yeah, I would love to not be the only one to benefit from what this law was changed for. I'm hoping that others jump right on board and roll right with me. Yeah, coming here this morning from Josh Virgil, truly an inspiration here with us as we continue with Christie's Corner to tell incredible stories of people that rise up through any type of adversity and make their own way. And, and like Josh says, in, in his case, it is a world that he is truly rolling in and having a good time and enjoying that. Christy, before we get into rapid fire, which Josh, we will play rapid fire with you. We're going to Put all of each other on the hot seat. We're going to have some fun with this. We can ask any question in the world, totally unprepared. And it can be about sports. It could be about life. It could be about literally anything. Christy, before we jump into that, is there any other note that you'd like to make, question you'd like to ask to Josh, any thought? I, I just think that um, what Josh is doing out there out there every day and, and showing people that, look, you be involved with your community, whether it be in sports and, and I can't imagine, I'm going to be just honest about everything. I can't imagine being the athlete that you were and playing three sports, as you said, and being, you know, being out there wild and crazy. And then boom, in an instant, your, your life changes. But it seems that it would be so easy for you to sit back and say, what was me and pity party for, for Josh. But this it's amazing to me the strength that you have to come back and just turn everything into a positive and like how you're going to change the world by this situation that affected you and so i just i just have crazy crazy respect and and um when i come up there to get some pb and j um what is that <laughs> buffalo chicken stuff that i like pat that <laughs> i'm gonna definitely say pat we have to go with <laughs> Yeah, we had to go visit Josh though, and and um, that that's number one. When I'm back up there yeah, with um, absolutely, I'll be out. I'll be. She's got that ramp. I'll meet you right out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we and we do have uh, very easy access to PB and J's. Uh, Pat, very smart in that respect to make sure that we make it extremely accessible. It is literally right off the road a main road there in 6630 Liverpool Road in Liverpool, New York, to pull right in, grab your food, and enjoy the many awesome things, the buffalo chicken wing dip grilled cheese, which is what Christy always talks about. I talk about the Bang Bang Shrimp tacos. Also, I would say it, when I'm in conversations, I would say that the barbecue chicken quesadilla, I brought up the homemade crunch wraps, are very good. Really, any th chicken, beef, whatever is made there. Those are all awesome. The tuna melt's awesome. The chili's really good because it's not too spicy, but it's not that it has no spice. It kind of meets you in the middle. So, Pat, I don't think, and, and I don't know if this is a fair question because I think the answer is no, but I don't think you've ever made a bad thing. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think I probably have. <laughs> I, You know, over the years, I've tried to... Um just incorporate stuff that I like 
into my menus and the way I cook and the way I season stuff. Um, I think um, America has a big hate for salt, but you can cook with it. It's just when you pour a ton of salt on after it's cooked. That means it wasn't seasoned when you cooked it. So um, I think you just if we as cooks can just season things a little better, it'll be healthier and people people will think it's okay to use salt. So, um, but today we're doing the buffalo chicken crunch wrap. So that's a little different. It's uh, it's not too hot and spicy, but it's got some buffalo kick, and uh, that'll be good on the menu. But um, you know, also you talked about um, you know your coaching and stuff, Josh, and and how your dad is your assistant. And I know your dad's in the room with you right there, but I got to tell you, if I had to pick an assistant for Josh, it would have been his dad all the way, and then second place would have been his mom because they're both there, and, and Tara, she'd do anything for him. So, you know, Josh, you, you were here, you left here for a reason, and um, I think you're mastering uh, mastering your reason just by by what you do. The inspiration that you are is, is phenomenal. Um, and I know that without your family, it would be tougher, and, and they make it a little easier. So um, you keep doing what you're doing, uh, coaching the kids, and just putting out better athletes and better people. Thank you. Better people. That's, that's a big thing. That I absolutely love from this spring. Uh, and that I have to share with you with Dad being my assistant is he's never really been an assistant before. Yeah. Where I have, I've had all this experience. So as an assistant, you're there to pick the kids back up after the head coach gets on them. You're there to have their back and things like that so we this spring we had a couple of errors going in the game and I've learned from experience watching other head coaches is that you don't scream try not to scream from the sideline and embarrass the kid as the play's going on especially teenage girls you'd rather (laughs) talk to them privately about the mistakes they made and then move forward from that well he's young right behind my ear at the girls to try to hurry up and run. Get after the ball after the air. Well, I turned my focus from the girls straight to him and told him that's not how things are done, that we have to you have to be the motivator, I have to be the one to get on them and you pick them back up. And I said, Why don't you go to the dugout and think about things for a little while? <laughs> <laughs> so, nice. so it was great to actually remake the role of, of father to son to coach to assistant in on place after he's done that to me for 46 years. So. <laughs> How did Warren take that? <laughs> uh, he was out like a little kid. I thought, was, I thought he was one of the girls getting yelled at. Oh, that's <laughs> incredible. That's a great. I, you know what? I hope my dad is watching and listening this morning. I don't think I don't. I mean, the fact that you can. I think every kid out there wants to be able at one point to be grown and look at their dad and go, "Why don't you go think about it for a second? Yeah. You go right over there and think about it." <laughs> so, Absolutely. yeah. So how? So dad, dad you said uh, took it a little bit tough how have you guys balanced out now do you feel like after the experience of being able to do this for a bit that uh that your assistant coach your father that that there's a good dynamic there now oh yeah we we talked about it that right on the ride home that night and uh sat things straight and during the season it 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 was smooth sailing after that We, we we definitely it, it it was like grilled PB and J came together perfectly. <laughs> there we go. How did the did the girls react to to you sending Warren to the bench? <laughs> there, there were some giggles. They they were surprised. <laughs> I, think, I think the parents got more of a kick out of it than anything. But <laughs> I, I know my family really did. That's for sure. I just I can I can picture it now. I can picture you saying that. Hey, hey, uh, coach, why don't you go in the dugout and think about that for a second? <laughs> <laughs> why don't you go figure that out? Come back when you're ready. So, I mean, there's no one else in the 
dugout because I only had nine girls on the team as it was, so they were all in the field when I had to call. Them to do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness! Crazy. <laughs> so, yeah. so Josh, for you, uh, right before we get into rapid fire here, uh, what would be your advice to someone out there dealing with adversity of any kind? You know, being being paralyzed, going through any type of adversity with work in relationships maybe somebody passed away i have a friend right now that i told you about last night is fighting als there's a lot of things out there that happen and you and i spoke about not being defined by what happens to us but by being defined by the person that we choose to be so what advice would you put out there for people that are watching and listening um a lot of what i had said early on that I learned from the baseball coach is it's not what happened to you it's how you respond or how you react like can we teach the kids that if another kid follows you in soccer how are you going to respond how are you going to react or if the ref makes a bad call that type of thing life throws you as I said earlier curveballs all the time how are you going to react to that curveball are you going to swing and miss or are you going to stay right on it and keep following through and keep fighting and knock that ball out of the park? Um, I, I absolutely loved when he, as a kid, I really didn't get it until this really hit me. Until I really rolled to my truck until I was like, okay, now I know what he's talking about. And, of course, don't take anything for granted. I, I mean, I live by that, but... It's going to be tattooed on my arm here in the next couple weeks. That life is too short. I was an inch away from dying. That don't take it for granted. You never know what can happen, when it can happen, how it can happen, where it can happen, or why it can happen. All those questions. So live it to the fullest. Have fun. Don't dwell on the little things because the big things can really make you crash. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I appreciate that, Josh. I, I appreciate everything that you've shared this morning. A don't take life for granted is is the biggest thing that you had said to me uh, last night. Said it again today that you live by the motto of "Don't take life for granted." We say it all the time. But do we actually live it, not taking seconds for granted, relationships for granted, opportunities for granted, and all the blessings that we have? I think so many times we focus on what we don't have and not what we do have. And, you know, your spirit, I, you know, to me, you may be in a wheelchair, Josh, but to me, that spirit lifts you out of it every day. So I, I want to thank you for that. And now it's time to play rapid fire. So, because we because we have a guest here with us, we're all going to get to ask Josh, Josh a question. He's going to be able to ask us a question. So, it's named Christie's Corner for a reason. There's a reason why I came up with this segment here and wanted to give you the opportunity to have your corner here, just like you had your corners in the I think you had every corner in the ring, Christy. I don't think any of the corners didn't belong to you. So, you get to ask the first question to Josh. What would you like it to be? Josh, a little a little bird flew by and told me that you are a huge Yankee fan. So as we know, there have been so many great New York Yankee players. Where would you put Yogi Berra on that list? Oh, boy. Uh, Yogi would be – I mean, it's tough. Is young – the Mount Rushmore Yankees or isn't it? It's always a debate. But <laughs> what he was as a player, what he, he was as a human being, and all that he gave back and every, I mean, 10 World Series weight rings, you can't beat that, right? No one else has right. anything like that. So, and then just all his yogiisms, he he's right up there. I mean, my all-time favorite, obviously, because I grew up watching him, is Jeter. And I got to meet Jeter. But Yogi was, is definitely, I mean, I wish I could have watched him play when when he was in his heyday because he would probably be my all-time favorite. 
between him and Luke oh. Gray because I um, mean a lot of my fight number four has always been my favorite number because of Luke Gray. And, and that that question was probably kind of like a generational question because you got right. to meet your favorite one of your favorite uh, Yankees with Jeter, and I got to meet one of my favorite Yankees with Yogi Berra. So that's yeah. probably a little bit of a generational question too. Yeah. That's awesome. And I appreciate that. All right, Josh, you got a question for Christy now. Yeah. Let's see. <clears throat> what was the uh, – I had it. What was the toughest fight that you've ever had to bet through? As a boxing match, not in life, <laughs> but a boxing match. <laughs> right. Right. Um, you know what? The very truth is, Josh, I I think I made every fight tough because I wasn't just fighting my opponent. More than anything, I was fighting myself in every fight in the boxing ring and out. Um, so they were all tough. And and I would watch some of these opponents on video and think, oh, well, this, you know, this might, might not be so tough. But damn, they brought their A plus game every time they fought me, and um, so it was always a little harder than than I had wanted it to be. So all all of them were were tough. Gotcha. All right, all of them. Pat, you got a question for Josh? Um, I'd have to ask, what is the hardest and biggest difference in coaching? Girls or boys? Uh, um, the intensity of things. When when coaching the guys, it's so easy to be able to push a button and just get them fired up a little bit more. Yeah. For girls. You got to watch what you say. You got to watch what, how you act. You got to be careful with this and that. Guys, they really don't give a crap. I can say it. I can play it. But girls, I got to be that, especially as a man, I got to be that extra little careful on how I say it, what I say, when I say. Um, and it, it also depends on the person, too. I mean, I know in, bas- in coaching basketball the past few years, I've been the assistant girls coach. And I know some of the parents of the girls, so I knew I could say things that I would say to one of the guys, to one, to one of the girls, to get her fired up. And it worked. And so it, that's really what the main difference was, is that type of coaching. Yeah, I think that, I think with the, with the girls, the ones that are the, the hardcore athletes, you know, they get it and you can say it to them. But then there's always some athletes on the, on the team that maybe aren't as good and aren't as serious and driven that they would be the ones that would have a hard time taking that. But I can remember uh, Jim Beheim speaking at the National Security Studies, and I can remember a general asking him, like, like, why do you yell at some players that come out of the game and not the others? And why does this one get away with everything? And and uh, I can remember Coach Beheim saying, you have to coach every player differently. Yep. You have to know what their strengths are, know what their weaknesses are, and know know how to get the best out of them, you know, to to be successful. And and that's true because all the, you know everybody's different. So everybody, you know, you gotta you gotta definitely build their strengths in that. So you don't, you don't know what's going on in their life outside of that. Sport. Exactly, exactly. So it, I mean, what I learned this past spring is. You never know whose mental strike cycle is on that week or that day or <laughs> whatever it may be. So you know, really be careful on that aspect of things the same thing too. Yep. <laughs> too funny. All right, um, Josh, your question for Pat. Oh. 
I have no idea. Um, <laughs> who has been your favorite boxer to be able to interact with, take pictures with, other other than Christy, obviously? <laughs> well, Christy, of course. Um, I'd have to say that I've been shooting the Boxing Hall of Fame uh, pictures since 1990. In 1990, like, wow, you know, I had access, but had no idea what I was doing. Um, but as the years went by, I think the most intimidating boxer to me was Marvin Hagler. Um, the early years, he seemed a little grumpy, standoffish, didn't really, you know, talk to to me or, you know, it just, he was kind of, you know, he was Marvin Hagler for Christ's sake. He was, he was important. And um, I'd say probably five or six years ago, we were in the Greystone for the, the cocktail hour. And Marvin would stay down on the floor for probably about 15, 20 minutes and sign a thousand autographs. And then he'd go up in the balcony. Um, and him and his wife would be up there. And, you know, they'd bring Jake LaMotta up there, Sugar Ray Leonard, and, you know, all the big guys. And um, he came over to to me, and he came over to who was shooting with me, Greg, and he said, here, take a picture of us. She's never asked me for a single thing in all the years I've been here. No pictures, no autographs, nothing. He goes, and this is what, like, it was like utmost respect because him and Kay wanted their picture taken with me because I was so professional with them. So it... It's my motto, like, when, when I go and shoot events, um, I'm there to shoot the event, I'm not there to be the event. And I think sometimes photographers, you know, they think they're hot shots and, you know, they're, they're uh, you know, bigger than the event. And I've, I've always not been that person. And, you know, we're there to cover it and to capture the memories. And I think I was successful with Marvin Hagler because he could be, he could be tough, but he was always respected and I felt the respect from him that, you know, that was, that was a pretty cool moment. Well, you, you, you did both of my weddings that I had and it's like, and I've seen you around NSS, you're like in camouflage, even though you're not <laughs> you're, you're taking the pictures, but who the hell knows where you are and when you are, wherever yeah. you, if you come up with the best candidates that I've ever experienced with any kind of photographer because you catch them when they don't know they're looking. And those are the best Thank, thank you, Josh. Um, that, you know, a lot of times nowadays the, the photographers are right up in the faces of people and stuff. And, um, you know, like with me, in order to get candids, the people got to know you're not taking them. So I, I personally use a longer lens and, and capture the moment. So that's, it's always been my motto. I've always done it. I've been a photographer since like in the eighties. And, um, you know, I think that's, it's just a style and, and I stand by it forever. <laughs> uh, you're, you're amazing at it. I think I might've been in diapers back then. <laughs> <laughs> you might've been. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, awesome to have that connection there and obviously uh, second in that of the photography work that uh, that Pat takes a consummate professional I will never forget the story that Pat told me when we like first met each other of just everybody sitting on the ra- you know sitting up at the rafters eating popcorn having food drinking beer photographer just kind of hanging out and she's the one that got the shot because she was working at work. I know that sounds crazy. And uh, to some people out there when you're supposed to be working. But when you talk about it, Josh, always being ready and always, you know, being the professional where it's not about Pat. It's about, you know, this event. It's about what she's trying to capture. And I'll never forget that story that Pat was like, here I am doing my job. Everybody's kind of like, eh, whatever. And she was able to to get that shot. And I think, you know, when it comes to an eye of a photographer, you have to care about what you're shooting. 
Because if you don't care about what you're shooting, you're not going to be able to capture. If you don't care about the people, if you don't care about, I know that, you know, Pat, you take pictures of the uh, the eagles that are, uh, the, the bald eagles that, that are here in Onondaga County. And I know that there's a passion and a love for that. So if you don't love it with anything, Josh, you know, we talk about coaching, Christy, we talk about <clears throat> boxing, public speaking, everything you're doing to pay it forward with boxers now. I know in my daily life, everything that I go after, I know Pat, you know, with food and photography, if you don't love it, you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it well. You're not going to do it consistently because you don't want to. And I think it says a lot about you, Pat, that you capture things the way you capture them because you care. And I think you build a rapport and a respect with people when they know, and I feel this about anything, and I think we can all second it, if you do something with love, care, appreciation, honesty, and a good heart, eventually people are going to see that, and eventually it's all going to come full circle. Yeah, and when you love, when you love what you do and you have passion, you know, do you really work a day in your life? No. I mean, the restaurant taxes me sometimes, and I'll tell you it's the most work I've ever done in my life, <laughs> but... I still love what I do and I love, you know, I love the restaurant that I've built, I, you know, the customers that come in, um, you know, it amazes me that every day we get new people that have never been there. Um, you know, so it's, it, it's definitely, you know, when you have a passion, you love what you do, you, you produce good stuff and it, it makes it easy. It definitely makes it easy. I think like the work life has been easier than, you know, I, I did insurance work and, factory work and all that and you know what I do is far better than any other job I've ever had um but most people don't get to do that you know they pick a job for pay and uh because their father got them at or you know some some other reason it's not something that they really chose so you know they may make a lot of money but they may not may not be as happy as as I am yeah well you know, somebody told me a long time ago, Super Bowl champion Dominique Rhodes, it was playing in the United Football League, and he had won a Super Bowl with the Colts and Peyton Manning, and he said to me, he said, if you chase money, you'll chase it forever. If you chase your dreams, the money will chase after you, and eventually it'll catch you. So, yeah. you know, I, I never forgot Dominique saying that. You know, he said, go after, he goes, you're doing the right thing. You're doing, you're doing good. Chase your dreams. Chase them every day, because that's the only way you're truly going to be happy. So with that being said, Josh, I get to ask you now, and then you get to ask me. So my question to you, Josh, is who has been your greatest inspiration in your life? Who can you lean on and look to and say that they, to this day, have inspired you by words, by deed, or by both? Who are they? My parents, by far. Um, there isn't a day that goes by that they're not right there for me or I'm not right there for them. That I mean, when I was in the hospital, it was three months. My mom did not leave that hospital. My dad only left to be able to come home to take care of my younger sister. And so the two of them have made me who I am. And that's just inspiration in itself. They're your yin and yang. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. The laughs we had and the fun we have now that I'm an adult, it, it just, it makes it that much more special. Absolutely. And I appreciate those words. I'm not surprised you chose your parents. I, I felt like that's where you would go. And, and I love the fact that they get to celebrate life with you and get to share life with you all the time. What is your question for me, Josh? I'm oh, sorry. Come on. I said I'm very fortunate, and I would never deny that. Absolutely. 
Well, you get the final word, Josh. What's your question for me? All right, man. I've been thinking about this. I know you've done all these interviews, all these sports, all these um, great stories. And we talked about the Jim Duran one last night. Now, you're looking, you're not looking for this huge story on, like I said, Derek Jeter's my favorite player. Yeah. You'd rather get to know the person and know their story and so you can just sit down and have a cup of coffee with them. Who, out of all the years that you've done this, is one person that you wish you could have that interview with that would just put the cream of the, be the, cream of the crop where... Now you feel like um, you've done it all. You've got to have that conversation. You've got to have that interview. And you've become friends with them. And now you can just sit down and, like you said, have a cup of coffee with them. Call them up, see what he's going, see how life's going. Yeah. That I, one thing that you haven't had yet. Now, I, I, and I appreciate the question, and it, it's a great one. Uh, somebody that I haven't spoken to yet that I would love to sit down and, and have that conversation. And I appreciate you saying it the way that you said it, because it's exactly what I want every show that I do to be, including Wake Up Call, which for people to watch it and listen to it and feel like they're sitting on a couch with us just having a conversation. Nobody's talking at them. Nobody's talking to them. We're talking with them. And if I could sit on a couch and, and pick anybody, you know, I, I'd probably go back to being a little kid. And one of them I'm going to get a chance to speak with. Uh, I firmly believe I'll have, I know I, I know I can do all of these. I know that if I, if I set my mind to it, I can have them all. But I would say Randy Johnson, I would say Damon Stoudemire, and I would say Fred Taylor. And I'm going to tell you why. So Randy Johnson... I had never seen any of my teams win a championship. And in 2001, Randy Johnson, who I actually have right off camera here, I have uh, a couple cards of Mr. Randy Johnson uh, sitting sitting right off of, of my camera. And I'm wearing my Diamondbacks here today because of the fact that they're back in the playoffs for the first time in six years. And I will be wearing Diamondbacks all week long. And I started yesterday. <laughs> So, you know, it wasn't Joe Torrey not putting the guys in double play down. Yeah, I, 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 I should have. Yeah, I should, I should have known talking to a Yankee fan about the world, that World Series. But, but, uh, yeah, Luis Gonzalez forever. But, yeah, I mean, I probably put Luis there too. I mean, Luis Gonzalez and Randy Johnson, I'd want to sit on a couch with. Because that, to me, is full circle, right? It's, it's the first time I saw any of my teams win a championship back in 2001. I was the only Diamondbacks fan that I knew. I was laughed at, you know, constantly for being a Diamondbacks fan. And I will never forget that moment in my life. I remember what I did with my dad, who's a Yankee fan. I remember what I did with my mom. I remember Mr. Uh, Todd Benware, my English teacher who came and parted the seas in the cafeteria line, and he's a Yankee fan, and he said, I want to shake hands with a man who kept his word and stood by it no matter what. Congratulations on your championship. He looked me in the eye, he shook my hand, and he said, congratulations to the Diamondbacks. He's like, I'm never going to say anything else about the Diamondbacks, but I'm going to say this today. And so I want to talk to Randy and Luis for giving me that moment. I would want to sit down with Fred Taylor, who is now doing his own broadcast, and uh, would love to sit with Fred because he tries to get to the deeper things in life and tries to speak about things that, that go far beyond football and beyond sports, which is, you know, my tagline is where sports meets life. So I've been that way for so long. I'd love to sit with Fred as a Jacksonville Jaguars fan and loving him since day zero. I think it's still my favorite jersey is the Fred Taylor jersey that my mom got a year before they were released. I don't even know how she did it to this day, but my mom's incredible. And she got it from Tennessee, and I don't like the Titans at all. So I love the fact 
that she got the jersey from Tennessee when they played Jacksonville in the same division. So she had it a uh, ship from Tennessee. Was he number 28? Number 28, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. So I, I'd want to sit with Fred and just talk about, you know, his life and his decision-making because, again, I was a Jaguars fan when nobody up north was a Jaguars fan that I knew of, and nobody knew why I was a Jaguars fan. And the same thing with Toronto. You know, I became a Toronto Raptors fan, and people said, you like the only team that's not playing in the United States. It's ridiculous. And when they won a championship in 2019, Katie Kalinske, I will always remember she was sitting to my right. It was her and I enjoying that championship. And I want to sit with Damon Stoudemire, but this is the crazy thing about life, and I saved him for last for this reason. God works in very purposeful and awesome ways. And my buddy Ross, who's going to be coming up on the show in just a few minutes, he sent me a message, and he's like my unofficial producer, and he sends me stuff every single day. So Ross sends me a message of who got hired as a new head coach. Well, I've covered the ACC for a decade, and I've been a Damon Stoudemire fan since I was nine years old. So I got a Damon Stoudemire and it's funny how it's like, I didn't know this question was coming, but I have show and tell. I have a Damon Stoudemire plaque that's right here in my studio. So Damon, to me, is my favorite basketball player ever. I just took to him. I'm 5'8", he's 5'10". There's a lot of things I'm sure he was told he couldn't do, and he was Rookie of the Year, one of the most successful Raptors ever, and uh, brought the team into existence in 1995-96. So... I wanted to interview him, and I wrote him a letter when I was little. Never got a letter back. Never heard back from him. Didn't even know if we had sent it to the right place, because back then there was, you know, you're trying to find an address. There's no internet. There was no anything else. And so Ross sends me a message. And at the age of 37 years old, I jumped up and down in my kitchen like the nine-year-old that fell in love with Damon Stoudemire back in the day and the team. When I found out that Damon Stoudemire, of all the places he could become a head coach, is the head coach of the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, which means that I will be talking with Damon Stoudemire very soon. And my birthday is October 21st. And right after my birthday, a few days later, I will be at ACC Operation Basketball in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I will not only be able to interview Damon, but I will be able to shake his hand and meet him in person almost 30 years after becoming a fan of his. That's awesome. So, that is awesome. So, yeah. So, life is life is filled with incredible guests. We've had over 4,500 on the show. I don't know if I could pick a single one. Everybody's touched my life in a different way. But if I could sit on a couch, I'd sit on a couch with all of the gentlemen that I became a fan of their team in day zero and I can actually say that I was behind them the day that they put their jerseys on. So that means that would mean a lot to me. But just to kind of piggyback off that, to answer the question to myself, is I actually, like I said, 98 was my accident. So by far the best team ever to play baseball was the 1998 Yankees. And... I would go. I would love to sit with the Fab Five. Everybody talks about the core four, but everybody forgets about Bernie Williams. And yeah. be able to sit with those five and tell them my story of what I've gone through and actually how much them winning the World Series helped my rehabilitation. Because there I was in the hospital. All I had on with this halo, all I could do was look straight. So I got to watch all four of those games of them sweeping the Padres in that hospital, and that just uplifted me because they just absolutely dominated that series. And uh, so I and I actually had the luxury of being able to tell Andy Pettit, Mariano Rivera, and Jeter that story. Um, one time down in Baltimore when I went to a game at Camden Yards. But to be able to sit on the couch with those five would be absolutely awesome. <laughs> well, and the fact you got to tell them the story in and of yeah. itself is incredible. Right. 
How did that happen? Yeah. So I had that cousin, or I have a cousin, and he got drafted in 2002, 2003, somewhere around there, by the Astros. And so he was um, in their camp. Obviously, he got up to high A, I believe, before he had back is- issues. And he made some friends, lifelong friends. And uh, so that this was 2010 when I was going went down to Camden. Uh, Ex girlfriend bought me tickets. She let me keep them. So my dad and I went down. (laughs) We were down there. My cousin texted me because I put it on Facebook that I was down there. And so the first baseman at the time for Baltimore was Luke Scott. And so my cousin said that they're down there because of Luke Scott that he'd like to get us on the field for BP. So I got to get on the field for batting practice and was within 10 feet, 20 feet of Jeter and all of them during batting practice. But I couldn't talk to him yet. And But I did get my picture taken with Joe Girardi. So even though I wasn't a fan of his, I already have a picture of myself with Joe Torrey, so I thought I might as well get one with Girardi also. So I did... And then after the game, we got to go down in the walkway where the locker rooms are and stuff like that so we could thank Luke for the tickets and things like that. So while we're down there, where we sat at first, the Yankees locker room was opposite the bus, so they had to walk by us to get to the bus. So while we're there... Andy Pettit walks by and you got this huge sign that says no autographs, no pictures. So Andy's sitting there, we're walking by and I said, Andy, can I talk to you for a minute? And of course he said yes because he's just that type of man. And so I tell him my story and I have a baseball sitting on my lap. And he was like, I thought he was like in tears. He was that emotional over it. He's like, well, would you like an autograph? Mm -hmm. You're asking me, so of course. So he signs my ball, and he's not 10 feet away, and all of a sudden I got like four security guards on me. You're not supposed to get autographs. You're not supposed to get autographs. I'm like, first of all, I didn't see the sign. There's a lie, because there's like all over the place. (laughs) Second second of all, he asked me. I didn't ask him. I'm not going to turn down this all-star World Series champion if he wants to give me an autograph. So anyway, my cousin's like, let's go down this way. There's no security guards. And we went down by the Baltimore locker room and the Yankees started to walk by. So Mariano came by next. So I got to do the whole thing. I got his autograph. And then we're waiting and we're waiting and we're waiting and we're waiting and everybody's walking by. Here comes A-Rod. He's drinking this bottle of water and my cousin goes, you want his autograph? I was like, not a chance. I am not an A-Rod fan, never been an A-Rod fan. But my buddy, my cousin's buddy was like, A-Rod, we could not uh, He didn't even act an eye at him, just kept walking, drinking his water. I said, and that's why right there. Yeah. yeah. So, um, we, uh, anyways, now I'm waiting. Luke Scott comes out. Oh my gosh, I'm going to miss Jeter and uh, Pachata. So here's this guy that's making millions of dollars, Luke Scott. And the way he gets to the stadium from his house is on a bicycle. Not even a big car, nice car. He rides a bicycle to the stadium. Wow. That, that was absolutely awesome. So <laughs> anyway, he walks with us towards... Now we're near the Yankee buses where he's going to exit. And all of a sudden, here comes Jeter and Posada. They're the last two out, but they separate. So now i got to pick which one do I go for. So, of course, I go for my idol. And I go after Jeter, and I sit and talk to him. And we're talking for like 10 minutes. All of a sudden, because it's like 1130 at night, 
they got a one o'clock game the next day. Guys are hanging out the windows, beeping the horn, trying to hurry him up. But in fact, he wants to still talk to me, but he had to go. So I got his autograph, got to tell him my story and how I coach and things like that. So it was pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. And it's amazing to see how they reacted. And I am also not a fan of Alex Rodriguez, and I like being original in an unoriginal world, it feels sometimes originality is important to me. So when all of the th- names came out for Alex Rodriguez, I said in 2008, I will come up with my own. And when I'm ready to unveil it, I will. And I have kept the same name for him for 15 years. His name on Wake Up Call is Steroid Rodriguez. So <laughs> if you. I was always an Aroid person but that guy another good one too yeah steroid i know aroid came out i was like i gotta go steroid driguez but yeah he's another one where if i was there with my dad and they're like you want his autograph i'd be like no he's signing the balls and putting his phone number and throwing it up to the girls i don't want another ball like that i'd re- Derek jeter that's my joe dimaggio of today give me my jeter i have whitey ford i need to get something of his we have the same birthday so i big big fan of whitey but with that being said josh oh did you have something else you want to say no i'm good okay thank you for all of this absolutely so for josh virgil for pat Orr, for christy salters martin i want to thank you all for watching and listening to christy's corner all across the world proudly presented exclusively by pb and j's lunchbox on 663 old liverpool road in liverpool new york christy a final note here as always is there something you'd like to say to the world, to Pat, to Josh, to myself, anything you'd like to leave us with? Just um, actually a couple of things. One, first and foremost, Josh, thank you so much. Um, you give me some great inspiration for today. Um, I, I, I woke up this morning a little bit feeling sorry for myself and in that what was me mode. <clears throat> so thank you. Um, number two, Dan, you said like you want people to feel like they're sitting on the couch with us. Well, this morning is definitely like a with us moment because I'm in a hotel in Nashville, Tennessee. Champ won't stop crying. Lisa's coming in and out, you know. <laughs> so it was one of those those mornings. I apologize for any distractions that that we may have caused. Um, Pat, thank you for everything that you're doing. I'm going to see Pat Thursday in Jersey City. We're going to be there with an IBF event, um, speaking a rising women uprising for women. Uh, I'm excited about that. I want to say hello, and I love you to my mother, who's in Beckley, West Virginia, listening on Dallas right now. And um, Dan, thank you. Thank you for giving us this platform and this wonderful opportunity to reach out to so many people, you know, every month. And um, and hopefully that – So Josh gave me that little get up and go this morning. Hopefully we're able to, on a regular basis, give somebody that little shot in the arm and, and – um, a little strength, a little, little go-go juice. Well, I can tell you, and I like that you called it go-go juice. So I'm going to use that. I, I can tell you, Christy, that uh, <laughs> I, I, I got to take this. But uh, listen, the media steals so much from me. I'm, I'm surprised I have anything left. But Christy, I, I would like to say to you that uh, the go-go juice, as you call it, has already affected people. And in the time that we've done Christie's Corner, we've already made an impact and we've made people, I know we've made people want to buy the book. We've made people read the book. We've made people watch the Netflix special. We've gotten people to move, to learn about you, to learn about themselves, to reconnect with themselves again. So I can tell you without doubt that there's been a difference being made by you, by Pat, by Josh. I know that and I feel that and I feel very honored to sit in this seat and be able to share these moments with all of you. So with that being said, thank you, Christy. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, everybody that watched and listened. Wake Up Call continues throughout this second hour. And Christy, uh, thank you for all of your kind words. Pat, thank you for the amazing food because (laughs) I will be over there today. I've traveled for the last two weeks, and now I need PB&Js because I can't find it anywhere else, obviously. I have to find it in central New York. And to Josh, I know it's a long time coming, but I feel very blessed and honored that you came on the show today and we got to tell your story. 
and we've only just begun, and you can be sure that I will be calling you again to expand on what we talked about today. I love it, man. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. Uh, good luck with everything, and especially with your mom. Now that she's, I hear she's on dialysis. Good luck with that. Thoughts and prayers to her. Yeah. Pat, you're awesome. I love you. And Dan, thank you for everything for letting me on today. Absolutely. It's been, it's been, it's been fun. The couch has been comfortable for sure. <laughs> the couch has been comfortable. Thanks com- for coming on. I appreciate it. Um, and keep doing what you're doing. I love you. Never stopping. Good. Great right, stuff thanks. here this Take morning. Care, everybody. Thank you all. Take care. God bless. You guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Christy. Bye, Dan. Thank you. See you. At coming here on Christie's Corner inside of Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports truly meets that thing called life. We appreciate you being here, hanging out with us in Christie's Corner bi monthly every other Tuesday. So we'll be back with Christie's Corner a couple weeks from now on Tuesday as well at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We're going to take a step aside right now. And- Hi, this is Amy from Mother's Cupboard, home of the whole frittata. We are open daily, 6 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. For takeout orders, call 315-432-0942. And tune in to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora for our monthly food challenge and try our Wake Up Call signature menu item available seven days a week. Here at Mother's Cupboard, we are Central New York, and it's our honor to serve you. Ma and Pa's Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory remind us that every day is worth celebrating. Find them at 201 Old 7th North Street in Liverpool, New York. Open Monday through Saturday in-store and all the time online at maandpazpopcorn.com. Serving our Central New York community and beyond, you can order all throughout the country at maandpazpopcorn.com. And remember to get your tins, which have in-store half-price refills forever. Ma and Pa's Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory available to you for fundraising and all of your events by calling 315-450-6272. That's 315-450-6272. Ma and Pa's Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory. How corny are you? This is Jimmer Sikowski, owner-operator of Chick-fil-A Cicero, 7916 Brewerton Road in Cicero, right in front of the Home Depot. I had a deep feeling that God wanted me to do something bigger with my life and to help people, help others. I kept putting Chick-fil-A in my life, and I realized as I was going through the franchise selection process that uh, positively impacting the lives of others was really core to what we do here at Chick-fil-A. First of all, it starts with the food. The food is brought in fresh daily. You know, we bring in local produce. We prepare to order in the kitchen. We hand bread our chicken. We hand spin our milkshakes. It's it's great food. It doesn't taste like fast food. I, I think the second thing is is the way people feel when they come in a Chick Fil A restaurant. It's different. We we try to treat people with intentional kindness here, which is very different and deeper than good customer service. And so, you know, I think it feels remarkable for most people to come in a Chick Fil A restaurant. And then lastly. The impact that we try to have in the community is very different. It's a big part of the expectation of every operator of a Chick-fil-A restaurant is that they're actively engaged in their community, they're a leader in the community, and they're, they're making a difference. When they realize that what we're striving to do is to shine a little light in their life, that's a very, very different experience uh, than you will have in any other quick service restaurant. And it's that remarkable experience that I think people will emotionally connect with. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, hanging out with you where sports truly meets that thing called life. I hope you're having yourselves a wonderful morning this morning. You can see what I'm wearing today. I started off the week wearing Diamondbacks. I am wearing Diamondbacks again today. I will be wearing the Diamondbacks all week long. And as you also saw with the unveiling last night of our official brackets, Ross Turetsky, Brendan Murphy, and myself all predicted the entire field before a single game has been played. And neither one of those jokesters picked the Arizona Diamondbacks. Neither one of them. Not Brendan, not not Ross, 
So if I'm right, if I'm right, it's bragging rights, baby. I'll tell you that much. But uh, I also want to let uh, Ross and, and Brendan know this live on the broadcast. Your check may not clear today. So, <laughs> so but, but with that... Yeah, so Ross and I have been working pro bono for a long time. And uh, when we've done these shows together, uh, the longest I've ever broadcasted with anybody is Ross. And he is the head coach of the Luzerne County Community College baseball team who just had their first action ever. He had his debut as a head coach. And we're going to talk about Major League Baseball. Well, we're going to start with the coaching debut. I get to say this. I've known Ross since 2008. So we've known each other for 15. Well, we knew each other before that. We've been friends since 2008, 15 years. And, you know, being around Ross as long as I have, talking with him daily, through messages and just having the opportunity to connect with him, I have to say this as an intro, and this will make up for the check that's not going to clear. So my my appreciation for Ross is vast, all jokes aside. Uh, he is one of my closest friends, one of my best friends. I consider him a brother. He has been family to me. We talk about lifting each other in adversity uh, Ross li helped to lift me with God uh, out of one of the deepest, darkest times of my life. Uh, a sad time with stuff going on that was out of my control. Uh, he was there for me daily. He was there for me at 3 o'clock in the morning. He was there for me at noon. And uh, it, was, it was a really tough time. I went through a, a bad breakup. I had graduated. I moved. I was trying to figure out a lot of things. And Ross was there. He was there every single day, all hours of the day. And, you know, he, he put me up in his house at times. He would be on the phone with me until phones go dead. Uh, he would come over to the house. So when I look back on my life and I look at the definition of a friend, you cannot put that definition out there in any dictionary without putting his picture next to it. He has genuinely been the kindest most selfless most giving heart that i have known outside of my own family he's become family so today to celebrate his coaching debut and have him connect with baseball in this way after playing baseball growing up playing it his whole life and now being a coach and being able to mold and help uh, young minds move forward win, lose, or draw, this man is going to be one of the greatest coaches ever because he cares about people, he loves people, he is genuine with people, he is kind and compassionate and empathetic and giving in a world that has forgotten so much of that. He is literally a coach that will help you the first day that he meets you, and he probably already has. So on his debut, coming off of his debut, I want to honor you and appreciate you, buddy, for all the hard work that you've done. But I could genuinely not say enough words about you ever in any broadcast because you genuinely are what it means to be a friend. And I would give anything in my life that God asked for if I could do it all over again and I had to give something up to pick you as as, as a brother. I would do it in a heartbeat. So congratulations on everything that you've become on everything that you are and everything that you will be and thank you beyond every um, barrier in this world that you've jumped over to be the friend that you've always been you're an incredible human being and you deserve the best always i appreciate that buddy i feel the same way i wish you uh you know it's in a way it's better because uh you know, brothers and family, you know, you're born with them. There's not much choice in it. But if I had to choose uh, someone to add to my family to be a brother, I would definitely choose you. And I, you get to choose your friends. You get to choose your adult family, uh, you know, beyond your family that you're blood related to. So I would choose you definitely to be part of my inner circle, my foxhole in a pinch when I need when I know I need someone to rely on. I would definitely choose you uh, time and time again. There's very few people in that 
as they would say, Robert De Niro, and meet the parents. That circle of trust. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, very few people would fit into that circle of trust. I'm a very private person. You know, yeah, I, you know, I say, Jeremy, things of that nature. <laughs> Hasna vista, baby. It is not the boomer. I say things like that. I get my Schwarzenegger on, and I'm all silly. But for the most part, in my regular life, I don't let many people in, so I would definitely uh, choose you over and over again. So, no, I appreciate the kind words. It was a very wild, crazy experience. I've been, you know, working towards this goal to be a head baseball coach for a long time, between playing my whole life and then being an assistant coach at Marywood for a while, and then even coaching my daughter in coach pitch and t-ball, and then I finally got the chance to do it, and I, I loved every moment of. Uh, of getting a chance to do it there was some ups and downs of course i know it's you know at times we, you know as a young almost like an expansion team starting up after four years of no sports at Luzerne county community college the trailblazers our mascot is the horsey like the married with pacers so we get to say nah, get to do that again uh <laughs> but uh <clears throat> it, 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 there are times you're gonna get you know you get your teeth kicked in a little bit on the field with more experienced teams and i know it's a process as much as i want to win right away I know that I can't can't let it destroy me or our team's confidence too much. That we're gonna have some downs, but we're also I think gonna have some ups. And I believe in our team very much. Uh, our team captain Nicholas Hollick. I want to send my uh, prayers out to him. He got injured early in our first game, so uh, if anything could go wrong in the beginning of that game, it did go wrong. So that first inning was became a disaster. And I just care about the person. Our team captain Nicholas Hollick. We're thinking of you. He hurt his ankle. I hope he can make a speedy recovery and feel better. I know he went back, came back to college, uh, almost 30 years old, to get to play college sports, which he never got the chance to do. Uh, so he, you know, I believe in him. He believes in himself, and I know he's going to work really hard to recover from this ankle injury that he had in our uh, scrimmage debut. And I think he, you know, the fall he won't be able to be there anymore to play, but I think he'll be there as a team leader, uh, a morale booster, and we will pick him up while he's going through this tough time as he rehabs. But I think he'll be back in the spring, and uh, I know he's going to come back better, better than ever. And I and I just want to wish him well. Uh, so that was a tough part early on in the game. We scored a run in our very first inning. We were the road team, so we hit first. So we're up one nothing. It looks good. We have our ace on the mound, our uh, our veteran uh, captain. And within like five six batters into the game, he uh, tries to cover first base bag. At uh, first, I thought he got cleated, it got spiked, but he didn't. His ankle went the wrong way. In many ways, it kind of reminded me of a freak injury like the Aaron Rodgers injury that blew up uh, my Jets season the first game of the season four plays 75 seconds in we blew out his Achilles but uh, yeah well, it wasn't good he hurt his ankle but hopefully he will be back soon and then after that it took us a while to kind of get back into the headspace of being able to compete and fight back when your team leader your heart and soul of your team is out that's a tough one to take when you see him get wheel, uh, drived off in an ambulance that's very hard to deal with and again this is our first, my, our first game together playing after a weeks of practice uh but then when they recovered they started to compete they played hard our, uh, in the second game i thought we were a lot more competitive our star pitcher brandon smith really kept us in the game uh and then our offense the last time up at the plate we scored four runs. We started a click. In the first game, we kept hitting the ball. And every time we hit it, Penn state Wilkesburg, I got to give my hats up to them, but it was also bad luck for us. They kept making these sweet web gem diving catches. I'm like, you know, where's the luck? They, our guys would either hit it right at them, line drives that would be hit nine out of ten times, or Penn State Wolves would make a diving catch in the outfield to rob us of extra base hits. So I have to give credit for them. They made great plays. Our players hit the ball well, and then finally that last inning at the plate, it started to click, and you could see the improvement as the game went along. Our pitchers, our defense kept us in the game. The offense picked up. We scored four runs our last time up the plate. And, and the, those balls, those bloopers that were getting caught early in the game, line drives that were getting caught earlier in the first two games, they were falling in. We found holes. We were scoring runs. And we started a click. So we could take that into our next scrimmage. We're hoping to play next Saturday, October 14th, again at Penn State Hazleton, another fall scrimmage. Uh, I think there's only better things to come out of it. I think we got better as it went along. I got better. I got more experience. The players got more comfortable. They got some of the jitters away. And also, we got over the initial shock of losing our captain. So a lot of bad things happened early on. A lot of good things to build on uh, for our next scrimmages as we move on. And as a coach, that's my job to motivate our players, 
to point out when we've done some bad things, the times I had to yell, but also to be fair and to pick them up when they're down. Our teammates, uh, their their teammates have to pick each other when they're uh, when things are going bad. When their things are going well and celebrating, that's sometimes easy to be a teammate and be a coach. And that was nice when we got to celebrate those moments. But when things are bad or they make a miscue or drop a, a pop up that probably should have been caught, we need guys, coaches, and players alike to pick each other up, not rip each other and tear each other apart, and be there for the next play. We will get better. I will get better. And I vow to you, uh, and I vow when I took this Luzerne job, I will leave this job and this school in better in better shape than when we started this from the ground floor scratch, where where there was no sports for four years. I will leave this in good hands by the time I uh, walk off the field for the last time as head coach of this program. Yeah, you know, and and I know that that's true, and. You know, the fact that you're playing in your first game and you're finding, you know, you're finding spaces and you're getting that opportunity on offense and and you're adjusting to different things. You're playing without your captain and you're still fighting. It says a lot because when a team, like you said, is essentially an expansion team, right? When a team starts new or a team hasn't been out there for four years, like Luzerne County Community College, and you come back, you're playing without having you know, returning seniors, you're playing without, you know, being in a situation where, you know, and and at a community college, you don't have the four years, right? You don't have this expanded thing. So you don't have, yeah. It's like running for Congress. Every two years, the guys have to go out, you know, they're always going to be part of the Lizard family, but I have to constantly keep recruiting, get guys, some of the guys I got, they were either academically ineligible, maybe could be ready for the spring, or we had other freak injuries along the way in the fall. So a lot of the guys that we were hoping would be there, they might be there for the spring for the regular season. I hope they are, but they're now out in the fall, and I have to, on the fly, we have to find players, we have to find guys, whether they have lots of experience or little experience. And even if everything goes well, after two years, we lose those players, and we hope they move on to a four-year school, or possibly if they're really good, the pros, and they can transfer, finish the last two years of college eligibility playing baseball at a D3, a D2, a D1 school. I'm hoping for that. I hope to help them in any way possible. But I would definitely tell anyone who's listening, if you have any interest in playing college baseball, it's an affordable tuition, the most affordable tuition in northeastern Pennsylvania, two-year school, you can get a lot of your requirements out of the way now and transfer to a four-year school after this, and I will give you lots of opportunities to play. So playing time will get it will be top-notch. We'll get to play a ton. We will work with you as much as we can to get you improved so you can transfer to a higher level after these two years. And it's an affordable tuition. It's in Nanticoke, Pennsylvania, the main campus, but they have smaller campuses in the Steamtown Mall in Scranton, like you saw on TV's The Office show. Uh, they have Wilkes-Barre, Pittston, all over. As long as you're taking at least 12 credits a full-time student, you are eligible to play uh, college sports. Uh, so anyone who's interested, come along and uh, play baseball for us. We'd love to, uh, we would love to have you and, uh, and hope bigger and better things to come. Yeah, they're coming here from the Luzerne County Community College. Head coach of the baseball program, Ross Turetsky, and uh, excited, very proud, and happy to be able to say those words uh, here this morning and anytime and uh, you can trust folks that if you're if you're a family that's listening that has a student athlete that would like the opportunity or you're a student athlete looking for an opportunity when Ross tells you something he means it and his passion is contagious and the desire and the want to and the drive is all there so there's uh there's a lot of great that can come from this and being at a community college is Kind of being like being at a D1 school now because you got to change every two years your team. And, well, every year to two years in the transfer portal, that's what D1 has to do as well. So Pretty it's much, yeah. definitely uh, having that experience. But I do want to get in before I let you go. Uh, Ross came out with his bracket, and so did I and Brendan. As I said, we released all of our brackets. I released them last night. I had the fun of going in there and getting the logos and minimizing the logos and then moving them around so that they could fit in here and we could fill out the whole thing. It was something that I envisioned and wanted to do, and I'm grateful with technology and by the grace of God. And uh, laying on my bed last night at almost midnight going, if this logo doesn't fit, I'm going to lose my mind. So (laughs) to be able to do this and uh, put it forward, Ross has chosen... Sanity later. Take a deep breath. Yeah. Some yoga and let the uh, bad toxic air come out of your body. <laughs> Serenity. What is it? Serenity now. What? Serenity now. They said it's Seinfeld. 
but then they eventually told Kramer and uh, George Costanza and Dan Frankenstein to the great Jerry Stiller that if you eventually do this, you probably will go crazy and, and do bad things and be violent. They said, serenity now, insanity later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was in with the good, out with the bad. So Ross puts his bracket out. He chose the Jays over the Twins, who were in the worst division in baseball, the AL Central. The yeah. Tampa Bay Rays over the Rangers. And then in the ALDS, he chose the Astros over the Jays. And he chose the Orioles over the Rays. And then the Orioles over the Astros to advance to the World Series. In the National League, in the wild card, he chose the Brewers, boo, over the Diamond, boo, over the Diamondbacks, and uh, a lot of boo there. And then he took the Phillies over the Marlins. Uh, yeah. I know you are. I just can't help my boo. And so he took the uh, Brewers over the Diamondbacks, the Phillies over the Marlins in the NLDS. He chose the Dodgers over the brewers and the phillies over the braves then the phillies over the dodgers to advance to the world series and win the world series after they got close last year uh, going with the phillies here to win it all over the orioles so today and it was important for me to get ross on today today is the first day of the major league baseball postseason it is major league baseball opening day for the postseason as we will have games of all the wild card teams will be in action all eight teams all four series will be happening starting today tuesday october 3rd it'll start at 3 p.m eastern time on abc with texas at tampa then we'll move on to toronto at minnesota at 4 30 p.m eastern time on espn and then later tonight on espn 2 we'll have arizona at milwaukee i love that arizona makes the playoffs because just like with the raptors or the jaguars of old I know I'm going to see my teams on television when they make the playoffs because you have no choice but to show postseason. So uh, excited for Arizona at Milwaukee tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN2. And then we'll move on to see Miami at Philadelphia at 8 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN. Those exact same times will follow tomorrow, Wednesday, October 4th. And if a game three is needed in this three-game series, if it's tied one-to-one, we will see a game three on Thursday with all of these or some of these matchups. So, Ross, we know who you picked, but bring me into these series. We got baseball all day long. After you finish Wake Up Call, you have some lunch. And after you have your lunch, within a couple hours, you're watching baseball from 3 p.m. Eastern time to probably 11.30 p.m. tonight. And I need to get more than that because I have uh, baseball practice today at Luzerne at 4.30. So I'm going to be trying to have baseball on in the background, maybe on the radio or on one of our phones while we're trying to get work done to keep getting improving on the field for our team. So it's baseball all day. It's like Christmas, New Year's, uh, birthday all over My birthday, I turned 37 years old. I'm feeling old. I turned 37 on Sunday. My family did, uh, was amazing. They were there the day before was our, that first scrimmage as me as the head coach of Luzerne. <clears throat> they were there to support me at the games. We went out to eat after, and then we went to Phillies at Mets. My wife got us tickets to the last regular season game of the year. Uh, the Phillies getting ready for the playoffs after they were so close to the uh, winning the World Series. They were national champions, only two wins away. They were up two games one over the eventual champion Astros. The cheating Astros, who I can't stand the Astros, but they <laughs> win anyway, whether they're cheating or not. I still can't stand I hate them more, more than the Red Sox. Uh, and then, and then, as the Yan a big Yankees fan, the Red Sox are our main rivals, but I can't stand the cheating Astros. But then they came back, won three straight games in a row, the Astros, and yeah. broke the Phillies hard. I have something for you really quick, though. <laughs> To some people, that's a drum roll. That's just the Astros practicing. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, Banging the, bang the garbage can. Yeah. Get the Bill Belichick and one Patriots of baseball. I'm not afraid to say that. I'm very happy. Uh, I don't. I know this is about baseball. I'm very happy to see the Patriots get destroyed now. Your Cowboys just crushed them. <laughs> 38 to 3 and I had such a great smile on my face because I'm like without Tom Brady the Patriots are pretty much what my Jets have been for all these years so like I, he might be a good coach but I think it's pretty much all uh, was mostly Tom Brady there and very little Bill Belichick with all the winning but I digress 
What I'm trying to say is that the Astros are going to be dangerous because they're back in the playoffs. They know how to win. They have that winning pedigree. They even got back one of their ace pitchers, Justin Verlander, from the Mets. And it was great to see uh, go to City Field, watch the Mets play with Pete Alonso and Vince Lindor. They actually fired. They told their manager he was going to be fired before the game started. So they gave a big farewell goodbye to Buck Showalter, who's a great manager, but has fallen short in the playoffs. And this year, he had a bad year. They got a new uh, president of baseball operations, the Mets, and he's out of the job. So they, they said goodbye to him. So it was a fun birthday. But uh, now I'm excited for playoff baseball. I really am hoping, that's why I picked the Phillies, that a lot of times, kind of like the 2014 Royals, almost won the World Series, lost to the San Francisco Giants in seven games, and the very next year came back hungrier than ever and knocked off the Mets to win the 2015 World Series in five games. I'm kind of thinking the Phillies in that same vein, that they came out of nowhere last year, barely made the playoffs one of the last days of the season, or a wild card team, had been in the playoffs in 11 years. They went on the road for the best of three wild card series, Came back in game one and looked like they were going to lose to the Cardinals when most of the country was rooting for the Cardinals because it was Albert Pujols and Yadier Molina, the two legends, final years in the major leagues. And they wanted to see them go out as champions. <laughs> and the Phillies, <laughs> they came back to win that two, uh, two games to nothing. Then they shocked the world. I think it's going to be a rematch of the NLDS this year. They beat the Atlanta Braves, who were the defending World Series champions going into last season after winning in 2021. They knocked them off in four games. Then they knocked off the Padres in the five games in their best of seven series. And then, like I said, took a two games to one series lead before the Astros came back and won three in a row uh, and won the World Series. But I like the Phillies now. They're hungrier than ever. They're experienced. They know how to win in October. They're not going to sneak up on teams like they did last year. But I think now they have that win pedigree. Most of their players are healthy. They got Zach Willard, their ace on the mound. Aaron Nola is still out there as a great pitcher. Uh, Bryce Harper is healthy, and he's mashing the ball. They might even get Reese Hoskins back, who's been out all year with a torn ACL that he got at the end of spring training. I really like these Phillies. Kyle Schwarber's destroying the ball with all his home run power. I really like this Phillies team. I think they learned how to win last year in the playoffs. They start off slow this year in the regular season, almost like the, the World Series hangover. After all the great success, how are they going to bounce back? And now they really are clicking at the right time. So I think the Phillies are hot at the right time. I like their chances. You can't underestimate the Miami Marlins. They got into the playoffs. They made the playoffs of the shortened 60-game pandemic 2020 season. Uh, and before that, they haven't been in the playoffs since 2003 when they knocked off the Yankees in the World Series. But the Marlins are, hot, are also a hot young team that was able to come up out of nowhere, kind of like the Phillies last year. So you can't underestimate the Marlins. But I think the Phillies, with their experience, and remember, we didn't say this earlier, in this best of three wild card series, you, whoever wins two for, uh, games first and then that goes to game three on Thursday, it's do or die, win or take all, like a game seven of the World Series. All three games of this series are at the team with the higher seed or yeah. uh, since the ballpark. So the Citizen Bank Park in Philadelphia is going to be the host of all three potential games against the Marlins in this first round series. The other series aren't like that. Once you get to the division series and the league championship series and World Series, they have the home field advantage for the first two, and then they go back on the road, then they go back at home. All three games will be in Philadelphia. I think that's a major advantage. That great place was a wild atmosphere last year in Philly after it was 11 years with no playoff baseball. As much as they love their Eagles football, fly Eagles fly, they're undefeated 4-0. They love Philly's baseball when they're clicking, so that crowd's going to be uh, excited tonight. They're all all the games will be in prime time at 8 o'clock, and I just really like the Phillies' chances. So I'm picking the Phillies here. I'm picking uh, as, as much as I have room for your Dimebacks. <laughs> and they're a great young team, a great story. First time in playoffs in six years. I'd love to see them make a run. I think the Brewers have really good pitching staff, have some, uh, some really uh, big-time hitters, but I really like the dominant pitch of the Brewers. I think will slow down the uh, the dimex. So I'm going with the Brewers in that series. Uh, and then I I've, I've the American League, I'm going with the Blue Jays with all their big power bats. I think they'll be able to beat the Twins. As you said, Twins, worst division in baseball. I think the Twins, if the Yankees were the worst division in baseball, as bad as they were this year at 82 and 80, still had a winning record, they might have been in the playoffs. So the Twins, I think, are going to get, uh, they're, they're going to be outed as a, as a mediocre team that really had no business being in the playoffs just because of the weak division. Blue Jays, their power bats will destroy them. And then I really like the Tampa Bay Rays, the Texas Rangers. They got a lot of offense. They don't got a ton of pitching, especially with Jake DeGrom and Max Scherzer out with injuries, the former Met play, uh, star pitchers. So I think the Tampa Bay Rays, they've been there and done that, been on long playoff runs, going to the World Series in the last few years. I think Tampa Bay Rays will crush them. But I, like I said, the Astros are still dangerous. They know how to win, so I think the Astros are going to make a run. The Orioles are a great hot young team that came out of nowhere this year, and I really like their chances. So I'm hoping that if the Astros end up playing the Orioles in the League Championship Series in the American League, that the Orioles, as the better team overall this year, and they will have home to the advantage of that series of the top seed, the Orioles, I think the Orioles will do enough 
But the Astros, is, uh, with the winning veteran pedigrees, we hard to knock the uh, we'll defending champion Astros out. I think the Orioles might be able to knock the Astros out in that series. And then in the NLCS, as I said, I, I think the Phillies are going to get back. They're going to upset the Braves two years in a row. Even though the Braves are the best record in baseball, and we said Matt Olson had 54 homers led Major League Baseball. Ronald Cunha Jr., you, we, you predicted it early in the year. Over 40 homers, 70 stolen bases, only player to ever do that. He's going to be the MVP in the National League. But I think the Phillies will beat the Braves again. The Dodgers will beat the Brewers with all their offensive firepower, but they lack pitching because a lot of their pitchers are out with injuries and you know Clayton Kershaw is getting older. So I think the Phillies will then be able to mash and power their way with a little bit better pitching staff over the Dodgers. So the Phillies will get to the World Series. And then Orioles-Phillies, even though the Orioles will have home field advantage that World Series, I like the Phillies because they have the experience. And the Orioles, I think, with their, with their youth, they might be able to come back the next year after learning how to win the playoffs and win the whole thing and win the World Series next year. But I think the Phillies coming back with that uh, playoff ex- experience last year and going to the World Series, getting so close to win it all, I just like the Phillies' chances in a World Series against a young, inexperienced Baltimore Orioles team. And it's a rematch of the World Series from 40 years ago when the Orioles won the World Series in 1983 over the Phillies. So I'm going with Phillies over the Orioles, win it in six games, win their first World Series title since we became best buddies in 2008, 15 years ago. They lost the World Series in 2009 to my Yankees the year after. And then, of course, last year, after not being close in 11 years, they lost to the Astros in six games in the World Series. But this would be their first World Series title since 2008. Uh, 15 years ago, and when they knocked off the Tampa Bay Rays, I'm going with the Phillies to redeem themselves, win the World Series, first time in 15 years, and knock off the Orioles in six games. But as I said, I love it. Playoff baseball in these wild card rounds from 3 o'clock today all the way until about 11, 11 30 when the Phillies game's over. Can't get enough of it. It's just like spring training baseball, and even better when games count, like opening day when there's games afternoon all the way to the middle of the night and i can't get enough of it because as i said i know my wife and you like to joke that oh, you know, i'll be sad i'll be in a state of mourning when baseball is over for the playoffs again this month but you're like oh we'll be back in two seconds between free agency where Shohei Tani will go between spring training in february yeah. but the real games don't start till the beginning of april so for five months as an insane sicko baseball fan i admit i'm a diehard hardcore crazy baseball fan i won't have a real game that counts for five months after the playoffs end, the World Series ends in early November. Mm-hmm. Not to the beginning of April, will it matter? So for those five months, I'll be a little sad. You know, big side spring train starts in February. I'm going to enjoy every moment of it. It's weird my Yankees aren't in the playoffs for the first time in seven years since 2016. But I still enjoy it. I'm rooting for the Phillies. It's the only local team to win it all. But if not, I'll cheer on the stories of the, of the Rays teams, Orioles young team, your Diamondbacks, so many young uh, youthful teams, the Miami Marlins, so many fun stories. And either way, even if the Phillies don't make win it all, which I think they will, uh, I, there's going to be so many fun things. And as long as the Astros don't win the World Series again, I'll be happy. I'll pretty much tell you this, buddy. Anyone but the Astros, <laughs> both teams in the playoffs, I will take any of the other 11 teams, and I will not be upset. I'll have a smile on my face, whoever wins it, except the Houston Astros. I do not want to see them win another World Series title. They had their cheating title from six years ago in 2017. Last year they won it. They claim it was clean. Who knows? Uh, I do not want to see them win it. But any of the other 11 teams, Especially with all the young and youthful, uh, youthful uh, baseball energy from some of these uh, young up and coming teams, I'll be happy whoever wins it, as long as it's not the Astros again. Yeah, you know, well, we will see three game series going on if need be. A two game can be a three game. Then we lead to five game series. Then we lead to seven, and we finish with seven in the World Series. Ross, as always, I appreciate it. I know you got to take care of my uh, little niche. If you don't know what that is, then look up boy meets world but my niche lj i know he needs your attention so i want to send you my best congratulations on your first game albeit a scrimmage here first game as a head coach with plenty more coming up thank you for all that you do thank you for your positivity your kindness your friendship your connection to me as a brother and for your continued expertise in this field of sports and beyond i cannot thank you enough for the person that you are, happy belated birthday again, and uh, happy to have you be the same age as me for the next few few uh, couple weeks here that we got before I, I turn a little bit older. And uh, as always, I send you my love, and, and like I said, happy birthday again.
I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. I love to be on with you. I appreciate all the support. Uh, last thing I'll say about the playoffs, we got to mention, I am much happier that these wild card series are best of three and not like a one game wild card game, even though it was exciting, like a game seven World Series. My Yankees, a couple years ago, they lost the Red Sox. They only had one game. You make one mistake, your whole season blows up after 162 games, such a long six month regular season. Your season came down to one game and you were knocked out if you lost the one wild card game. I'm very happy they've elevated to at least best of three. Uh, so I think that's a lot more fair. So I'm happy that the wild card series has been expanded. They've added more playoff teams. There's 12 playoff teams. They used to only be 10. So I'm very excited for playoff baseball. Thank you for all the support with Lazarin County Community College and Trailblazers. Uh, can't wait to hopefully uh, continue on and doing well with the baseball team. And thank you again for the birthday wishes. I hope you're going to have a great birthday coming up. Turning the big 3-8 uh, on October 21st. We're supposed to play a scrimmage that get, they, at, in Scranton, Electric City against Lackawanna College a team that made the College World Series last year in junior college, Division Two ball. So it should be an exciting time. And uh, like I said, I, I, I thank you for everything. You're doing great work. And I love you, buddy. And uh, keep doing all the great things and keep being the great person that you are. And I'm uh, very excited that uh, we get to be the same age for a few weeks. And I'm very happy to get to talk to you today. Enjoy the playoff baseball, buddy. Go Arizona and Diamondbacks. First time playoffs in six years. Hopefully they shock the world. And who knows, maybe they'll be carrying the World Series trophy when the season comes to end, the beginning of November, when it's a little bit chilly out there. Well, and all I know is my hashtag that I created for the Diamondbacks, they're free to use as long as I can get some credit for making it. It's hashtag snake bitten. So make sure you enjoy the beginning of the postseason, and let's make sure that we get this series a little snake bitten, which means that they're moving on. Ross, I'll talk to you soon. I appreciate it. <laughs> Take care. See you later. And coming from Ross Turetsky here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, the Luzerne County Community College head baseball coach, a brother to me, and a fantastic mind in the world of sports and beyond. We will take a step aside here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports meets life, and we'll be back with the ingredients to success right after this. In these unique times, there are those in our community that give us a sense of normalcy and positivity. Pizza Man on 50 Oswego Street in Baldwinsville has been here for you for over 35 years and is here now. Call 315-638-1234 or order online at pizzamanbville.com to bring those familiar tastes into your home. And remember to come see our monthly on-site broadcasts centered around the community and our Baldwinsville Bees. Pizza Man in Baldwinsville. Any way you slice it, they are always here for you. I'm George Townsend of Honda City with some good advice from buying a new car. The true cost of owning a new car is determined by the appraised value when you trade it. No vehicle appraises higher than a Honda. Next, look for low APRs and deep discounts. You also want low maintenance costs and great fuel economy. That's why my advice to you is to buy a new Honda. Looking pre-owned, visit our Honda Certified Used Car Center. Honda City, 7140 Henry Clay Boulevard, Liverpool, or hondacity-cny.com. corporate purpose at Chick-fil-A is to glorify God by being faithful stewards of all that's entrusted to us and to positively influence all those who come in contact with Chick-fil-A. And what became increasingly clear from our success in Cicero is that people love Chick-fil-A. And also I think we recognize that you know we had a great opportunity to grow the brand and grow our platform. I felt incredibly grateful when I was you know, selected to be a Chick-fil-A operator. I think what it's meant for me, what I've come to realize on a very deep level is that this is a calling for me. It's not a career. It's not a job. The Lord called me to be a Chick-fil-A operator and to use these restaurants to glorify Him and to positively influence other people. I'm blessed. I'm very blessed. Head to Chick-fil-A Clay on 3974 State Route 31 in Liverpool, New York.
Carvel DeWitt. It's what happy tastes like. Do you know why? Because we make ice cream. Creamy, rich, flavorful ice cream. Not yogurt or iced milk like some of our competitors. Ice cream. Fresh by hand daily. For the calorie conscious, we have something new for you. Our new Carvelite. Same great flavor, creaminess, and texture of our regular ice cream with only 35 calories an ounce. So whether you want an ice cream cake, flying saucer, dasher, Carvelanche, hard or soft ice cream, we will satisfy your craving with our fresh, handmade, regular, or new Carvelite ice cream. Carvel DeWitt. It's what happy tastes like. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is located on 3680 Milton Avenue in the Home Depot Plaza. It is your family-friendly sports bar and restaurant. Folks, some sports bars aren't family-friendly. Some family-friendly restaurants are not sports bars. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is proud to be both. It is that marriage that you've been looking for for years. The Wildcat Sports Pub is your home base for your sports bar and restaurant needs, games for the kids, indoor and outdoor activities, and enough things on the menu to come back every single week and get to try something new. They're open Sundays from noon to 8 p.m., Monday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Thursday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to midnight. For reservations and party information, call 315 315- 487-2222 for the Wildcat family-friendly sports pub and restaurant. GG Cards and Breaks. Like, comment, subscribe. GG Cards and Breaks comes to you on 639 Delmar Place in Syracuse, New York, right off of Teal Ave. They are the premier sports card shop, in my opinion, because they care about the people that walk through the door. They are extremely knowledgeable, and they love the hobby as much as you do. And that's the beauty of it, is having people working at GG Cards and Breaks that are big kids. Love the hobby, love making new memories, love helping you out, and love seeing you enjoy your time there and find your excitement and build your memories. So GG Cards of Breaks open seven days a week, Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And on Sundays from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., they are the place to go for singles as well as slabs, a.k.a. graded cards, packs as well as boxes. Their supply is constantly evolving. So if you come in on a Monday, there's something different on a Tuesday. They also have a back wall of every single Major League Baseball, NBA, and NFL team. So no matter who you're a fan of in Central and Upstate New York, you can go out there and grab your teams and go through the boxes and find special inserts and rookies and autos and all different types of amazing cards of your favorite team. I'm an Arizona Diamondback, Jacksonville Jaguar, and Toronto Raptor fan. I didn't think that any place here in society was going to find in Central New York that I was going to find all of my teams. And GG Cards and Breaks was that pleasant surprise. You can go in there today, find the teams you love, grab some awesome packs and boxes and see what you can get and make new memories with the hobby that you love. If you've never collected cards before, today's a great day to start. And if you have, Today is a great day to continue. GG Cards and Breaks, they are the difference on 639 Del Mar Place in Syracuse, New York, right off of Teal Ave, open seven days a week. Avicoli's, located on the corner of Route 57 and Wetzel Road in Liverpool, New York, has been your trusted neighbor for decades. Located just steps from Liverpool High School, we're happy to have the Liverpool Warriors on-site, on-location broadcast at Avicoli's through Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora every single month, featuring student athletes, coaches, and administration throughout the year from Liverpool High School. Head out to Avicoli's today on the corner of Route 57 and Wetzel Road in Liverpool, New York, open Tuesday. Tuesday through Sunday for lunch, dinner, and drinks. We'd love to see you out there. And of course, you can call them at 315-622-5100 for takeout, delivery, and catering. That's 315-622-5100. And also find them on myavicolis.com. That's my A-V-I-C-O-L-L-I-S.com. Having peace of mind when you're out of town, that your furry loving friend is safe and sound, means taking them to Canine Campground. Because we all know that when it comes to the love of our pets, 
it goes well beyond the call of duty to make sure they're safe and sound. Right, Lily? <laughs> so take a ride to 242 Johnson Street in East Syracuse, New York, and see Canine Campground and where your dog will be staying in the classic cabin, the executive cabin, the grand cabin, or of course, the luxury cabin, because if you know Lily, you know she loves luxury. <laughs> Now you don't have to wait to the last minute to find a family member or a friend that'll take your dog for a few days. Call Canine Campground at 315-299-4013. That's 315-299-4013. Their drop-off and pick-up times are Monday through Sunday. Check caninecampground.com for more information. That's the letter K, the number 9, and campground spelled with a K, dot com. Caninecampground.com. When you're going out of town, bring your dog to Canine Camp Ground. PB&J's Lunchbox, the food truck that you love finding all throughout Central and Upstate New York, now has a street side cafe. So when you're craving their traditional favorites as well as their out-of-box amazing menu items, you can now head to 663 Old Liverpool Road in Liverpool, New York, located just minutes from the highway, the thruway, Destiny USA, and Onondaga Lake Parkway. PB&J's Lunchbox Street Side Cafe is there for you Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., serving breakfast, lunch, and and dinner all throughout the day. Get breakfast for dinner, dinner for lunch, whatever you fancy, including their award-winning grilled peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Find them at 663 Old Liverpool Road in Liverpool, New York. PB&J's Lunchbox, where we love to know what's in your lunchbox. This is a special message from 317 at Montgomery restaurant owner Joel Carpenter. Open Tuesday through Saturday for your dining pleasure on 317 Montgomery Street in Syracuse, New York. We wanted to be a part of the resurgence of Syracuse. We saw uh, a lot of money being put into bringing people back downtown and thought that, you know, we'd like to be a part of that. I love putting together a good dish where people see it first, they fall in love with it, and then it tastes just as good as it looks. We want to provide the best food in Syracuse that we possibly can, and we want you to leave here talking to your family, your friends, about what you had to eat first and foremost, but also our service and to walk out feeling like you're part of our family. I work out in the front of the house a lot, and I love walking to every single table asking them how everything is, and people looking at me and smiling and saying, this is the most amazing short rib I've ever had. This is the most amazing filet I've ever had. And Donna is great. Sarah's amazing. Thank you for coming over and talking to us. And them them just being truly happy for the experience that they've gotten. 317 at Montgomery Restaurant, part of the fabric of downtown Syracuse, located on 317 Montgomery Street in Syracuse, New York, open Tuesday through Saturday for a unique and memorable dining experience. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Proud to be here with you every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time under promise over deliver as we're going to expand out a little bit here to make sure we bring you the ingredients to success. Proudly presented by Abacoli's on 7839 Oswego Road in Liverpool, New York. It is located minutes, steps even, from Liverpool High School right down the road. And we do our on-site, on-location live broadcast with Liverpool High School's Warriors every single month at Avicoli's. So make sure you come out for those. We just did one called the Wake Up Call Knockout featuring Liverpool alum, CNY native, and professional boxer Bryce Mills. And it was truly an incredible time with him and his supporters out there at Avicoli's at 7839 Oswego Road in Liverpool, New York, open all throughout the week, Tuesday through Sunday. Make sure you make your way out to Avicoli's today and support local. So with that being said, the ingredients to success for today, I would say, hey, you know, when it comes down to it, the topic that I really have to lean into is something that affects me and has affected me now, and that's time. Time. Sometimes we feel like time ticks by so fast 
You know, in some cases, people feel like time doesn't go by fast enough. But time, time to rest, time to recharge, time to refuel, time. So I think it's really important for us to look at the time that we have and how we spend the time that we have. Because time is something that you never get back. And I think having the time, my ingredients to success for today are, you know, having the time to refuel, to recharge, to reset, to refocus is an incredibly important thing. It's an incredibly important tool to have. Do you take the time to sleep? Do you take the time to read? Do you take the time to go do something nice for yourself? Take a ride. Go to your favorite store. Go to a movie. Take a walk. Spend time with your dog or your cat or your bird or your iguana, whatever pet you have. Do you take the time to take the time? Because when you are tired emotionally, physically, mentally, whatever tired you feel, it taxes you. And when it taxes you, you can't be at your best. So it is very important for you to take the time that you have and to spend it wisely and to rest when you need to rest. It's okay to say no to a couple things. Hey, you know what? I'd love to do that, but I'm not going to do that today because I'm tired. I need to recharge. I need to take a break. I feel myself getting a little bit overwhelmed by things. I need to take a step back and I need to breathe. You know, a lot of us connect success to how much work we're doing. As long as we're busy, as long as we're doing something, got to do, got to do, got to do, got to prove, got to prove, got to prove. And that's not healthy. It's not that you don't be a go-getter. You should always be a go-getter. But a go-getter knows you need to sleep. You need to take personal time. One of the things I said during COVID was a lot of us realized that it was important to take a walk, to pray, to meditate, to do yoga, to call a friend, to call a family member, to just sit in silence. That it was important during COVID, while we had all this time and everything was stopped, to spend that time that we had wisely. But I kept saying, once things get back to normal, once we get back to the hustle and bustle, once we're running the kids to school, once we're going to our job, once we're able to go everywhere we want to go, once we don't have to wear masks, once we can go back to games, we can cover this, we can cover that, we could do this shoot, we can do this event, we could do, you know, this meeting. Once everything goes back to normal, do we suffocate again? Or do we remember to take the time? Do we remember to breathe? Do we remember to refocus and refuel? It's something I haven't been great at. I'm not going to lie. I've been blessed to be very busy by the grace of God. All of my busyness is good. It's been fantastic. But I have not taken the time to breathe, to sit, to go to a movie, to refocus. And I think we all need that time because if we don't have that time, then we are doomed to get sick, overexert ourselves, do too much, not think clearly. And that's not healthy for anybody. So it is my hope that you take these ingredients to success for your day and you utilize them, that you take time for yourself, that you realize it's okay to say no to some things that are out there, and that you give yourself moments to breathe, to reflect, to sit in silence. Because we all need time. As I always say to you, we plug our phones in. We don't even think about it half the time. We just run and plug them in. 
We got to have them at 100%. 80% is not good enough. 90% is not good enough. They got to be at 100%. And as much as we fight to keep our phones at 100%, how rarely do we keep ourselves at 100%? How rarely do we focus on being 100% in our own life? Always plugging our phone in, always plugging our computer in. But how many times do you recharge yourself, your heart, your body, your mind, your soul? What are you doing for you? We live in a society where we feel guilty if we stop working. But if you do not take a step away, even just to eat lunch with your phone off, in silence... How many of us can't even spend 20 minutes eating a sandwich because we're afraid we're going to miss something? I'm not asking you to be lazy. I would never ask that of you or me. I'm asking you to be healthy. I'm asking you to carve out an hour, even just an hour a day, to do something for you, away from work, away from kids, away from the craziness, to just breathe, to be with God, to stop, to reflect. Because without peace of mind, none of your work's going to be great. Without peace of mind, you are not going to feel good even if the work is good. Without taking a deep breath, eventually you feel suffocated. So I ask you today to take a breath, take an hour, take some time, recharge, reset, refocus, refuel. Because as good as you are at your job, and as good as you are being a spouse and a parent, and as good as you are with everything you have in your life, If you don't take care of yourself, nobody else will. Those are your ingredients to success. I look forward to both of us listening to that and doing something with it. With that being said, I want to thank you for tuning in to Wake Up Call every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time on YouTube.com and Facebook.com, both backslash Wake Up Call DT and on live internet streaming radio on wakeupcalldt.podbean.com. You can find Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on Amazon Music, Audible, iHeart, iTunes and Apple Podcasts, Player FM, Podbean, Podchaser, Podvine, Spotify, TuneIn, and YouTube by searching Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora or one word Wake Up Call DT. A big time thanks to our incredible partners, Carvel DeWitt, the Wildcat Sports Pub, Mon Paz Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory, GG Cards and Breaks, Chick-fil-A Cicero, and Chick-fil-A Clay, Canine Camp Dog Daycare, 317 at Montgomery Street, Avacoli's, Canine Campground Dog Boarding, PB&J's Lunchbox, Pizza Man, Great Lakes Honda City, and Mother's Cupboard. We, have, of course, are proud to be the exclusive multimedia marketing partner of your... Lemoyne College Dolphins. It spins up every single month on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Find your Dolphins Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern Time here where sports meets life. And you will find your Dolphins every first and third Wednesday with AD and DT featuring Athletics Director Bob Beretta and myself, Dan Tortora. Every second and fourth Wednesday, the Dolphin Dive, diving into the stories of student-athletes, coaches, administration, future Dolphins, and alumni. We under-promise and over-deliver, so you can find all of our content, including all of our bonus content with the Dolphins by going to youtube.com backslash wakeupcalldt and clicking subscribe. And you can see the Lemoyne Dolphins playlist that is there for you to go back and find the two plus years of our connection with the Dolphins as their exclusive multimedia marketing partner. For more information, go to lemoynedolphins.com. And as always, fins up.
the Brian and Stratton College Bobcats of Syracuse, bringing the Bobcat buzz in our exclusive multimedia marketing partnership every single month here with student athletes, coaches, and administration. You will find your Dolphins hanging out, or pardon me, you'll find your Bobcats hanging out here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora with men's and women's soccer, men's and women's basketball, as well as baseball and esports, all coming to you here exclusively on Wake Up Call with the Brian and Stratton College Bobcats of Syracuse. You can find all of our content by subscribing to youtube.com backslash wakeupcalldt. And of course, the BSC Syracuse playlist is there for you to find our Bobcats over the years. For more information, go to syracuse.bscbobcats.com. And as always, go Bobcats. The Alfred University Saxons are here with us during Saxon time. Every Monday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time, you'll be able to connect with your Saxons. You can find the Saxons with the presidential perspective every first and third Monday of each month at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. Every second and fourth Monday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time, you'll find the Saxons Spotlight spotlighting student-athletes, coaches, administration, and alumni. All of our content with the Saxons is available for you by going to youtube.com backslash wakeupcalldt and clicking subscribe and checking out our Alfred U. Saxons playlist that is there for you 24-7. For more information, go to gosaxons.com, and as always, go Saxons. With that being said here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, I want to thank my incredible guest today, Inside of Christie's Corner, our bi-monthly segment with International Boxing Hall of Famer Christy Salters-Martin. I want to thank her, boxing photographer and owner of the exclusive partner of Christie's Corner, which is PB&J's Lunchbox, the owner Pat Orr. I want to thank her and make sure you go out to PB&J's and support local today on 663 Old Liverpool Road in Liverpool, New York. And, of course, a big time thanks to our special guest and a 24-year coach and the current assistant coach of the boys' varsity soccer team at Fabius Pompey, Mr. Josh Virgil, and to his parents, his wife, his kids, his grandkids, and all of his loved ones. God bless and thank you for all of the good you bring into Josh's life. To my best bud, Ross Turetsky, who is now the head coach of Luzerne County Community College's baseball program, resurrecting a program that hasn't been there for four years years so very happy to have the program back and you don't have a better leader than who you have right now which is Ross Turetsky talking about Major League Baseball and the ingredients to success which are taking time to take a break in your life so make sure you do that God bless to you all find us on Facebook at Wake Up Call DT X at Call DT Instagram at Wake Up Call underscore DT and as always God bless no stress Do your best. I'll talk with you soon.